Mark. <laughs> <laughs> it's our grab bet. Mark, what the fuck am I doing? Happy I holidays. Know. Happy holidays, my Dude, friend. Happy holidays, my friend. And you know what this means? This is our holiday 2022 grab bag episode. And if you're new to the podcast, this is how this works. Every, every, we do a couple of these a year. Uh, we kind of stopped short after the Nicolas Cage grab bag incident. <laughs> we were like, fuck the grab bag for a little while. But holidays are our time. This was the genesis of the grab bag. This is where it started. And God damn it, we're going to do one every holiday that this show is in existence. <laughs> whether they're good movies or, or not bad and and this year's theme so last year we did the santa movie grab bag we did santa movies that was our specific zone this year you already seen if you've downloaded the podcast the titles it's in the fucking title the theme for this year is holiday horror so this is our holiday horror grab bag uh you already know the movies because you've seen it on your phone screen but we'll reveal them as we review them so we're not going to officially say what they are at the moment but this is our holiday horror grab bag and this is how a grab bag works if you're new to the show. We pick two movies. Mark picks one, I pick one. Neither of us have seen the movie. Obviously, it has a theme. The theme we picked was holiday horror. And the way that we balance this out is, let me share my screen. Wouldn't be a holiday grab bag episode without commercial, Mark. Mark, oh, I've, got yeah. a, I've got a special commercial to oh, kick shit. off nice. our 2022 holiday grab bag episode. This one goes out to you and our buddy, Mr. Suspicious. Come celebrate the season at Long John Silver's with holiday shrimp meals. Happy holidays from Prancer and Long John Silver. <laughs> Mark, happy holidays from the movie Prancer that you forgot existed and Long was a movie. John Silver's. Prancer was a, a reindeer movie. It was like the only reindeer movie. Remember that? It came out like 1993 or 94. Yes, and they had all these tender all. commercials for it. It was like, this holiday season. It was that guy. He's always got to take it. Oh, yeah, I know. Softly. He's kind of got that slightly raspy, This quiet holiday, voice. <laughs> reindeer will fly and you will believe it. Prancer. Oh my God. That's how it goes. And Prancer was like, and it fucking bombed because I, I mean, nobody knows. Yeah, it's not that, like every year somebody's like, it. I got to watch fucking Prancer. People don't remember Prancer. Anyway, you want to know what happened to Prancer people? He fucking got into bed with Long John Silver. <laughs> and they're making fried <laughs> hey, shrimp. Hey, you got to make that money. Fucking Santa don't pay shit. Mark, nothing says happy holidays quite like some soggy fried shrimp and questionable white goo on the plate those shrimp look so fucking gross it looks so oh, you know how they try to make it look better for the ad yeah. it's like this looks like ass we'll just show it <laughs> yeah they didn't try to guzzle they were like just be truthful show the reality yeah. they're like those hard documentary filming show the reality of the situation if it looks like ass, let us present the ass. <laughs> let us present it for the holidays. Do you know how it was devoid of color? It was just like a tan landscape. Yep, it was just breading. beige. Beige <laughs> and then that white gloop. I don't know what that... Was that supposed to be Coleslaw? What was that white Prancer's gloop on the jizz. plate? <laughs> <laughs> this is Prancer's loins. So that he may go and produce more Prancers for sequels. 1996's Prancer 2, Lost It'd in New York. It'd be funny if that's how confident they were about it. They're yeah. like, ex you know when they expect the sequel to occur and then it just bombs? <laughs> yeah, and dude, because like, at the end they go, that. Prancer will return. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, kids. Prancer will return. And in the meantime, you can go to Long John Silver's and pick up your Prancer calendar, <laughs> complete with fresh Long John Silver smell. Each page has a smell. It's a scratch and sniff. Mm, <laughs> it's a fried it's a... shrimp and toilet <laughs> <laughs> smells like long john silver's taint <laughs> oh no that's just oh i see that's just sea salt i get it <laughs> oh, oh. hey happy disgusting. holidays everybody yeah, happy holidays i guess <laughs> that's we do on the holiday grab bag 2022 mark we've picked two movies to review and um i think i'm going i think well, i don't know what you think but let's get what you think first out of the way Mark, which movie do you think we should review first? Your pick or my pick? And I figure the person who picked it will reveal the movie title. So wh wh where do you want to go first? You know what? Can I be honest with you? Please. Since I have watched both, and hopefully I watched both the correct ones. That'd be funny if I did. That'd be great. But I have a feeling we'll be talking more about your movie than mine. 
Okay. Yeah, I agree a little bit. So let's start with your, should we start with your movie? Yeah. Let's do it. Mark, please reveal your pick for the holiday horror grab bag. My pick was a movie called Rare Exports. And I think it's got like a redonkulously long title. Hold on. I actually should have prepared, but it's it like, is just Rare, Rare Exports. Exports. The original Christmas tale. Yeah, exactly. Home of the original Santa Claus. Yeah. Right? I, I, have, I have to, can I just apologize to you for choosing this movie? I am so <laughs> sorry. Dude, I was like, when it started, I was like, this is the second time I, fucked up with I was like, this could be kind of cool. And then as it was going, I was like, did he fucking Nicolas Cage me again? I, I did by accident, though. But I, I'm going to say this. I think our movies are reverses because my movie started off stronger and gradually turned into a pile of prancer dung. Yes. That I can, I'm going to admit it's ri- because to be honest, Matt, this movie sucked. And I have to admit that toward the end, cause I hate it. There's a, okay. The main character is this annoying kid that you want to punch in the face. He has the most punchable face. He does ever. Yes. And the most punchable voice. If you can punch sound, you would punch his voice right in the balls because this kid sucks so much. I was to be fortunately, you know, some sites they have like, oh, you can skip five seconds ahead or or maybe 10. And then in some cases, 15 <laughs> to be was gracious enough to give me 30 seconds. So toward the end, when that kid was like, nee, 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 I was just like pressing 30 seconds, You're skipping through. <laughs> I thought you were going to be like, Tubi's jankier than that. (laughs) It doesn't have a 30 second forward. It has a two minute, 19 second forward. Why? No one knows. It's Tubi. And then I love that you watch this on Tubi. I watched it on Hulu with no commercials. Oh, really? It was on Hulu and I watched it with zero ads at all. It just started. My Hulu got commercials too. (laughs) I was thrown off. Now, I don't, I don't mind. uh, I don't mind international film at all, but I was thrown off because I didn't realize it was a, a a Finnish movie. It was a oh, yeah, they, film. They totally screw with you too because it starts out completely in English. In English. And even I was with like, like oh great. very British sounding actors. And then once the subtitles came in, I was like, I don't think we've done is this the first foreign film we've done on the show? I I would I thought we had done one before. I don't think I, we've by the ever way, done a movie with subtitles on this show. I was I had another choice, which was the Spanish film, which looks significantly better than this one. What was the what was the Spanish oh, film? Damn it, it was from one from nineteen ninety five. I think what was it called? Don't mind me, yeah. I'm eating Tums to stop my heartburn. <laughs> Is that from your meal? <laughs> it's from Prancer's Long John Silver's visit. <laughs> Mark. Oh my god. We should take that's that rare. Cra- why are that's crazy? You're literally chomping. That's what it is. Tums. Those are tums. I just ate two tums on the on the mic. I'm sorry, everybody. I got to do what I got to do, man. You know, I that had is lunch. probably one of the most professional things. Thank I've you. A very. Crunchy it's the holidays. Song. We're all family, you know. If you're here for the holiday grab bag, you, you get it. You know that I have to eat tums. <laughs> Shout yeah. out to tums, by the way. <laughs> That's gonna be our next sponsor. Tum 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 tums. Tums, 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 tums. This holiday brought to you by goddamn Tums and Prancers, Long John Silvers. Prancers should just present things. You know, like, <laughs> they're like, what's the guy who owns Virgin fucking Richard Brant? Richard oh, yeah, Brant. Yeah. Branson, yeah. Dude, instead of Richard Branson, it'd be like, Prancers, Prancers Morimoto Restaurant presented by, <laughs> <laughs> presented by Virgin Atlantic Airways. Prancers, Long John Silvers, combination Caesars Palace. Sorry. That sounds like the future. Just some that is weird the future. conglomerate. We're all in a snow globe controlled by Prancer, the 1994 film that you all <laughs> forgot about. Whoops. Mark, That's I his think... vengeance. By the way, the I movie th- was called The Day of the Beast. There you go. I've never heard of it. So Mark, if, it, uh, if you're new to our show or you forgot the Nick Cage grab bag, Mark infamously chose... Because the grab bags are about having fun, having silly fun times. And thank God, at least this movie was lighter in tone than Leaving Las Vegas. Um, but you took us down a weird path. I would say that kid did have the most punchable face, but I'm kind of forgiving of him a little bit because he was forced to stare at old man dongs. <laughs> yeah, I know that the this whole movie, was movie. Very, I'm guessing it's, it's maybe it's because we as Americans are not used to that stuff. Just like yeah, adult I guess nudity they're not as prudish around. in other countries. It's okay for adults and children to have their wangs out together, yeah. but I guess here it's weird. And it was weird. Like there's a moment where, 
I mean, spoilers, but like the whole crux of this movie, the whole climax is a kid being chased by ravenous naked old men through the snow yeah. and they hang dong and they're close. Yeah, they don't. There's no obscuring of said dongs. It's, no. They're just right out there. They're right out there. Is this the first movie? OK, here's so that was a Matt Mark movie show first movie where I've seen a penis. There you go. I was going to ask, <laughs> is this the first movie where Santa's hung dong? Where you've seen Santa's so, dog. Yeah. Because technically they're all Santa's, right? Yeah, they are. We should they say, sell them off as Santa's toward the end. Rare Exports is is a movie. I bet you didn't know this. I did a little research before the show. Because I was like, how the fuck? I kind of remember this movie, you know, coming out. I think it had a very, oh, very, really? very limited release. I think it was on like 20 theaters. Um, and I just remember it being like a thing that film blogs would feature and be like, look at the weird Santa movie, Rare Exports. Mark, I did a little digging because I was like, why did Mark pick this? And, and what's so special about this movie? So this movie started as a series of short films. Did you know that? Oh. I'm not cheating. I'm not looking at anything. I'm just talking to Mark. And this is what I learned. In the days before YouTube, because YouTube really hit big in like 2005. And that was kind of, once that happened, that was how people started to like virally market their movies. But this, for the first series of shorts that were also called Rare Exports, Right, it was a directing duo, these two Finnish guys, and they made a short film. And it was so popular on festival circuits, people were like, you got to make this a movie, you got to make this a movie. Well, they had no way of marketing it. So they kept getting money, like small increments of money, and using those small increments of money to make bigger shorts. And then when, when YouTube happened, like the dawn of YouTube, basically, Rare Exports became a famous video that people would share. It was one of the first oh, wow. videos. It was like a 10 minute short film. And basically what it was is you seeing the ending of the movie that we know, Rare Exports, where it's a bunch of like Finnish dudes packaging Santas like in crates to ship them out all over the world. And what this feature film, Rare Exports, that we're reviewing right now, what it functions as is a prequel. It's a feature length prequel to get you to the short films. Because That's the short dope. films, I actually That's watched cool. one of them. The short films are great because they're very short. They get right to the point they're and they play more short. with, they're very short. And they play more with comedy, like more of like the rules, like, ooh, if you're around the Santa, don't curse, don't smoke. And you see funny examples of those rules being broken and what happens when Santa, you know, thinks you're naughty versus this movie where, dude, I thought the first half, like the first 30 minutes was like in interesting, but this movie is all build up. And then once it gets to the, the hook of the movie, I was like, okay, this is kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, then the credits roll. It's over. Wait, are you fucking kidding <laughs> me? What the fuck happened there? It chose there? the worst part of their story to tell in it a long so weird. format too. Like the recipe for it was all there in the short films. That's what I don't get. Because once the Santa comes out, I was ready for them to be like, oh, shit, he's going to start terrorizing the neighborhood. Yeah, They're gonna that's have what to I find wanted. him. You know, we're going to get all these funny Christmas scenes that he goes through. You know, maybe he finds a real reindeer and tries to ride it or something like we don't get any of that. It could we have just been get, dope. Actually, it could have been great. It could have been great. And I love that's the thing. Like, I, I, I don't want to just shit on the movie because I was kind of entertained. Uh, I love the way it looked. I thought the cinematography was beautiful, even though they did yeah. do a, a lot of digital. You could see a lot of the early CG, like once those naked Santas are running through the woods. I was like, that's that's like the Lord of the Rings or when program. they're on the cage. Yes, it's just like it's the copy and paste method of doing character generation. Well, remember that Lord of the Rings <laughs> shit where they were like, we we have a crowd program that generates crowds of orcs. We could just hit a button and they'll just independently react to each other. They took that. They must have taken that same exact technology <laughs> and just applied it here to rare exports. Mark poorly. It sounds like I, I like. I wouldn't say I hated rare exports, but I, I wouldn't say I enjoyed it. But you really hated it. Yeah, I wasn't really a big fan of it. I, I the story was just kind of like all over the place and went nowhere at the same time. It was. I found it really boring to be honest. It was. It's a good looking, very boring movie, and I just. <laughs> didn't like any of the characters yeah i just couldn't connect to any of them i was just like i, I also found like that the the mythology like the mythology or the the point of the movie like the, the, the okay well what kind of movie is this gonna be is it gonna be a scary movie where a kid's got to confront his fear of like a scary santa right or is this gonna be a movie where a kid's got to be a hero and step up and be a man and face nature and be the one to capture the santa or is it gonna be a movie about a bunch of finnish people going into business capturing santas like 
It didn't fucking know. I was like, this is four fucking also, movies it, stuffed into one. By the way, it also annoyed me that they were like, they only wanted 85 grand for a Santa. And then at yeah, the end, they I was with still the other guy. wanted 85 grand at the end, but then they just multiplied it. And I'm like, wow, you people are, are fucking stupid. Dumb. There's one guy did, who they, actually looks way, like uh, Mr. Suspicious. I agreed with that guy. <laughs> that guy who was like, we should be charging a million dollars. I was like, yeah, get a fucking million for Santa. Yeah, idiots. By the way, they, they did go that the kid becomes a man route at the end. Which was weird. It made no sense to me because I would who the hell is listening to this dumb kid? And all the adults are just like, wow, this kid is awesome. I'm like, the kid just did dumb shit. <laughs> He, he walked like, around yeah. in his underwear and a hockey and a hockey helmet. And I his will father give was like this. so proud of his dumb dumb child. I Aww. will give the movie this. It's got great cinematography and great mullets. How many great mullets were there in this movie? <laughs> a lot. You know the older kid who gets kidnapped? He gets replaced by the changeling in his bed. That kid had the best fucking mullet. <laughs> Killer mullet, dude. If you want some good mullets, watch Rare Exports. I like that the changeling looked cool though. That was cool. There was some. Say, that's a sad thing. Is there's a lot of cool stuff in here? They don't. They never go toward the cool stuff and like, oh, let's explore this. They're like, oh, that was cool. How about we just forget about it? Let's talk about what we really want to talk about, which is the naked Santas. Let let's let's set this up for the audience because I feel like they kind of know what the movie is, but maybe they really don't. Fuck everything that happens before this. This is the thing in rare exports you got to fucking know about. Damn they dogs. capture what they think is a Santa. All right, it's like a fucking frazzled old naked guy who's got a long white beard and he they put him in the santa suit to resell him to this big industrialist guy who was like digging in a mountain for some reason we will find out why that's not important okay the movie also doesn't think it's that important because it does nothing with that information here's the kicker when they bring the old guy they put him in a cage they find out he is one of many he's not the true santa he's a santa's little helper Right. So basically, I guess what you would think are elves are technically just little Santas. They're extensions of yeah, Santa. Pretty much. So and the way that you find this out is there are like a trillion old man Santas who have not gotten a Santa suit. They're just naked in the snow. And this is what we were talking about. They're hanging dong straight up <laughs> just right away. OK. And they are all hungry for children. They want to they want to essentially box the kids in so that when the giant Santa, which is what they dug in the mountain, when the giant Santa is freed, he could eat the children. But which, by the way, you know me. Sounds you, pretty dope. You know I love <laughs> Krampus. Once I saw that giant thing with the horns, I was excited. I was like, this is oh, awesome. Yeah. Okay, I can't wait to see the giant Krampus terrorizing the Finnish village. And they got to hop on fucking snowmobiles like an 80s movie and shoot at him and stuff. That never fucking happens. No, you no, never there's barely any action Santa. in this movie. It's kind of like, it's very dull. Yes, nothing and fucking uneventful. happens. It's like a bunch of setups for no payoff, which is like, for, as for me, I think that's the most annoying thing a filmmaker can do. It's like, yes. here's something you can look forward to, but how about it's never addressed again? And if we do pay off on something, it's the really lame stuff. Why? Okay, if you're going to spend the money to have all the CG Santas and the CG chopper and the whole thing with the kid flying, zipping around the mountain to oh lure all God, the Santas out, so why would you waste that? Instead, have your CG people make a giant sequence where the kaiju-sized Krampus Santa bursts out of the thing and they got to chase him down the road. Wouldn't that have been way more entertaining? Oh, hell yeah. And it would have been easy to conceal because it's nighttime, snow. You could put all that stupid digital snow in front of everything <laughs> so you could cover up your glitches and mistakes. You know what I mean? Why couldn't they waste the money on that? This well, is a misappropriation just, of funds. I think they... I don't know. It seems like, you know, so when short filmmakers get an opportunity to do something large, they really don't know how to carry a story out. Yes. Because they're so used to the short film format. I think that's what this one suffers from because it's like, it just feels like a collection of short film ideas rather than like one cohesive film. Which makes sense because this came from it short films. Is, yeah. The short films are so much better. Not that you're like wanting more rare exports right now, but if you're ever curious, <laughs> you should check out those short films because they're pretty entertaining. Um, and did you get to, uh, I'm just going to now go over things I, I wanted to quickly bring up. Did you, did you find that like this movie has a lot of stuff borrowed from Raiders of the Lost Ark? Oh, oh yeah. Especially the ending, down to the ending shot. You know that great ending shot? It's legendary 
where you see the crate where the Ark of the Covenant is, and Spielberg slowly zooms out. And you see the goddamn all the crates that are being kept in the government warehouse. Rare Exports literally rips that exact shot off for its ending shot with very John Williamsy sounding score underneath. Even the guy at the beginning, the industrialist, when they're excavating the mountain, and he's like, "We, we must, you know, don't, don't, you know." Don't raise it right away. Get the crews out. Like it feels like Raiders of the Lost Ark, does it not? And then in the oh, middle, yeah, it definitely has that adventure movie feel to it. Yes, and we would think that would be right up our alley because once I heard the fake John Williams and I saw it was shot pretty decently, I was like, okay, this might be kind of cool. I was getting excited. I was very confident about this pick, like the first few minutes. Yeah, and then that slowly started to wane as it went on. I was like, oh no. Yep, I've made another huge mistake. <laughs> I've made a terrible <laughs> mistake. Prancer's big mistake coming to HBO Max. <laughs> Mark, I will say this wasn't quite a leaving Las Vegasian fiasco. Yeah, thank God your... it wasn't depressing. At it least. was at Jeez. least this was at least entertaining. It had entertaining bits in it. Once you you had to get through a lot of bullshit to get to that oh, entertaining yeah. stuff. And there were interesting ideas, but like I. I here was the thing. If you're listening to this, you may be asking, well, why didn't you guys review Krampus? Why didn't you guys review Silent Night, Deadly Night? Because these are very obvious picks. We don't want to review these movies. We may review them in the future, but we want to review movies that we've never seen. Mark and I are both very familiar with those movies. We know they're fucking awesome. You know they're yeah, awesome. We've seen them in the theater as well. Let's, so yeah, exactly. When people were trying to take pictures of the screen with Krampus. Fucking <laughs> idiots. It's going to look like with nothing. Your picture's going to look like nothing. Like, we wanted to watch new movies, movies that were new to us that we had never seen. And I was like, I was happy that you picked this. But, but I was, you know what? To me, it felt like there were a lot of sl- when it comes to Christmas horror, there's a lot of slim pickings because half of them that, that I were the, half the ones I looked at because I would at least try to do a little bit of a Metacritic score. This one surprisingly scored higher than the film you chose. However, very strange. This film is significantly worse. But most of the other selections I had for like Christmas horror, it was like. 3.0 and like maybe you'd be lucky if it hit a 4.0 on imdb like, yeah they're oh, all these are all it's trash. a lot of z-grade schlock and not fun good z-grade schlock it's like truly to make a buck it's just oh, like yeah. it's all about the cover art i've gotten yeah, tricked exactly. so many times with like the awesome cover art and you're like look at that movie like there's a movie on amazon prime that i've wanted to watch that's called jack versus the lanterns and it oh, looks like shit. a jack-o'-lantern man <laughs> come to life you know, with like a flame, flames inside of his jack-o'-lantern mouth and shit. And I was like, that movie looks awesome. And you fucking know that thing's not in the movie. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, probably not. It's they created like... it in Illustrator and whatever, Blender or whatever, put it on the cover and that's it. Yeah, and then whatever you see in the movie just looks like dog do. I was actually looking forward to like the ginger dead man. I was like, oh, that sounds cool. Awesome concept. Such bad ratings. I was like, wow, you know. I can't I can't do something that's dog do again. So I, <laughs> I decided, you know, I, I thought I did my due diligence. So I was like, okay, ratings fairly good. You People did your due due diligence. <laughs> yeah, basically. That's what it seems to be for these damn grab bags. I can't get a good one. <laughs> well, I'll say this. It was definitely better than leaving Las Vegas. I will if I could say something nice about rare exports. Yeah, at least Way I didn't want to kill myself at the end of this. Yeah, movie. I didn't want to die or have, <laughs> you know, I didn't have a depression headache after or have to eat my feelings at Long John Silver's, right? <laughs> I just, you know, I just kind of the movie finished and I was like, huh, so that's it. And then I just went about my day. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'll forget about this by tomorrow. <laughs> Dude, when you were like, hey, man, all right, let's do the show. I was like, fuck, do I remember anything about rare exports besides old man dongs? <laughs> That's pretty much all you need to know. That's it. That's I the, actually, that is the climax of the movie. I was looking at some behind the scenes features. So now I'm going to reveal this. So I looked at some behind the scenes stuff and the, the kid actually is not in the scene with the old man hanging dong. They shot him in front of a green screen. And they greened in the naked men. So, they, so I'm willing to bet it was it was for the reason you think. So they're like, we can't have <laughs> our eight year old actor staring at a naked Santa's dong all goddamn day while we figure out how to get the they're shot. reconfiguring lights and stuff, and it's just these like naked old guys just, just smelling naked old man around. ass. <laughs> yeah, it's they're like the rare export set really stinks. That smells like oh god. <laughs> it's, 
Oh, that's why. Oh, because oh. we have 80 old ass cracks. Oh, it smells like Ben Gay and ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that sounds like the holidays. Prancer's Ben Gay and ass. Presented <laughs> by Prancer at Long John Silver's. Mark. Mark. Do you have any? I feel bad because I feel like we're breezing through rare exports. Yeah, no, that's completely fine. <laughs> <laughs> because that's kind of what the movie does, right? It gets you. This it not builds up, builds up, builds up the cool idea, and then it just does nothing with it, and it rolls credits. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to just talk about like, oh, these are some great setups. If there's no payoff, they should have included. They're so dumb. Instead of just showing the end credits, they should have just taken the shorts and made that the end of the movie. Like, okay, now they're That's going true, into like business and they Chan captured movie. the Santa. Yeah. <laughs> okay, instead of watching Jackie do a stunt and then laugh it off, let's show the good parts of Rare Exports where people get excited. You know, oh, this let's is show funny. The good parts. They were like, well, we have no good parts. They're like, well, we only have two good parts and we watch them all. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Is that true? <laughs> let's see. Was there anything I liked? I'm really trying. Besides the cinematography, the mullets, the kid mullet was awesome. Old man dongs were funny. No, actually, there wasn't. Wow, you can you included old man dongs under your life just because column. it was so funny to me <laughs> that you would have your movie, your killer Santa movie, feature, and I'm talking feature, dude. You know how like you have your actors' names, like top billing, second billing, right? Fifth billing in this movie should be old man dongs because it really Santa's features. Dong. They're just two steps shy of having all the dongs have like speaking lines, <laughs> and it was just well, like kind of. A... <laughs> crazy to me like even jess walked by when i was watching it she's like what the fuck i was like why did you walk oh, through so you at this didn't moment watch this with her no she didn't want to watch <laughs> i presented her both options and she was she says she immediately canceled out the other one that we'll discuss later she was like nope not watching that and she took a look at rare exports she's like mm, there's a kid on the cover it says adventure maybe i'll try this one and i was like yeah you can watch rare exports she wound up doing something else and i was like fuck it i'm gonna watch and then when she came out she was like god what the fuck is this by the it's way, a... that's the feeling you should get. Fuck it, I'm gonna watch this. Yeah, and then <laughs> it, I'm just gonna oh, watch this. No. Yeah, dude, and then it ended, <laughs> and I literally went about my day. I think I went, I went outside for like a walk. I fucking well, went I guess to I'll Jamba apply Juice. My hemorrhoid cream and uh, go get a smoothie. <laughs> yeah, I'll get a Jamba <laughs> Juice and apply some hemorrhoid cream. <laughs> Much Mark... more entertaining than that movie. <laughs> Our holiday grab bag has begun with rare exports. The tale of the original Santa Claus. We should also say. The movie is in Finnish and in English. It's very weird. But mostly Finnish. It's mostly Finnish. <laughs> but I did laugh when... And you'll be glad that it's Finnish. <laughs> I la- <laughs> It certainly <laughs> finishes. Um, I did laugh when they get the one guy. They're like... Because they're like, you got to get an interpreter. This guy speaks American. And they get him and they're like... They're like, tell him we want this. Tell him we are angry men and we are prepared to do whatever it takes. And the guy goes, we are men. I that, I, that just fell flat on me. I was like, I oh. wanted to punch my TV. I did think that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> His bad translation was funny. And it was funny that one of the characters does look like Mr. Suspicious. You know who I'm talking about? The guy who arrived in the Santa gear. Yeah. He's like a regular guy on the Rare Exports team. He looks exactly like Mr. Suspicious. <laughs> the guy that wants a million dollars looks like Mr. Suspicious. <laughs> I knew. I knew. The minute he came on, oh, I was God. like, Mr. Suspicious! There he is. Tell us he had this secret career in Finland. Uh, Maybe next time we'll ask him about the old man dongs. Like, how smelly was it? Were you there on the day of the dong? (laughs) The day of the dong. (laughs) Rare exports. Day of the dong. Day of the dong. That's a really good title, man. There you go. Call up George Romero's estate. Day of the dong. (laughs) Somebody has to have had used that title, right? For their porn. It's a it's a bunch of people in like gray. You know the fucking Romero Dawn of the Dead like gray zombie paint. They're all in the gray paint. It looks really bad. Hanging dong. Day of the dong. <laughs> you know Bub the zombie who's like listening to music and learning how to become human. They have like oh, a porno that, version of him. Was that Frank or something? No, it's not Frank. What I thought his name? name was Bub. Is his name Bub? You know he had like a uh, I think it was like a Time Magazine article on him because they thought the character was so compelling. It was an amazing character. I love Day of the Dead. I don't love Day of the Dong. That, I thought you did. You said that wasn't their top three favorite Well, no, Old movie. Man Dongs, different movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, not to be confused with Day of the Dong. I don't want the Dong painted gray. That's weird. <laughs> I like Mark, mine a healthy color. 
Do you have anything else to say about rare exports? No. Can we please export this movie into the bin? Mark, would you recommend rare no, exports? No, I don't <laughs> recommend it. Mark watched it on Tubi, where apparently you can fast forward ahead two minutes and 19 seconds for no reason. <laughs> I watched it on Hulu. So if you have Hulu, you can watch it with no ads. So there you go. But watch at your own. Definitely invite the whole family in for the hang and dong scene. Yeah, they'll really enjoy that. They'll love it. Mark, <laughs> they'll love you after. As we transition to our next film, let's watch another holiday classic commercial from our youth, Mark. Here we go. Look what a difference! Welcoming that looks. Dude, as look opposed at... to going through a shitty Netflix interface. Dude, Take look at this fucking killer lineup. First off, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the original movie, 1990 fucking masterpiece on VHS. God, I love that movie. She holds it up to the screen. This then from Blockbuster Video. Then it hit me. Look at I this. I can make everyone like happy at Blockbuster. And with Block killer lineup. Yeah. TMNT, Peter Pan, all the dogs Buster go to heaven. On Esther can rent all total recall All kinds of mysteries uncle charlie can choose his own adventure. uncle charlie's getting total recall and some goddamn blockbuster gift certificates son <laughs> happy fucking holidays <laughs> this girl oh, knows days. she's like this is what i'm getting and she's running it down for you my yeah, nephew now she's probably dead she's definitely dead but in her time <laughs> we should honor her because she gave out teenage mutant ninja turtles the movie on vhs she gave Uncle Charlie Total Recall on VHS. All dogs <laughs> go to heaven. And she kept oh, It's a Wonderful Life for herself. That was very <gasps> kind of her. Oh, that's a, the, a very Matrixian twist because then she imagines what life would be like without her, just oh, like the protagonist shit. of that film. And she disappears, <laughs> you see? That's why she's not around. Just like Blockbuster. Ventures. Let's hear that and jingle I again. Can have a wonderful life. Blockbuster video. Give the Ooh. gift of entertainment. What a fucking Maybe. difference! <laughs> can you feel it mm. rewind me bitch <laughs> blockbuster video can you feel this ah. dude <laughs> would that be awesome if they like added that in <laughs> you can have a wonderful blockbuster video oh can you feel me <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> I like that that's in the retro Christmas commercials. There's no Christmas imagery in it at all. There's zero. <laughs> None of the movies were really Christmassy, were they? No, but I guess they were big Christmas releases at the time. Like, oh shit, everybody's going to be asking for TMNT, the movie on VHS. And I could vouch for that. I remember we all were. And, and also, also Total Recall. All dogs go to heaven. See you at the party, Richter. See you at the party. <laughs> I know it's not a commercial, but let's see Arnold. People, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's see Arnold do that. <laughs> these people need air, yeah, damn it. Damn you, Cole Hagen. Cole Hagen, these people yeah. need air. Yeah. Yes. Ah. See you at That's the party, Richter. <laughs> Can you feel this? <sighs> and he throws the arms, the blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> see you at the party, Richter. Can you feel this? <sighs> <laughs> Mark, the next movie on our holiday horror grab bag. This was my pick, and I picked a little movie called Better Watch Out. Mark, I had you have never seen this movie. I had not see, previously seen this movie. I didn't know a thing about this. Movie. I had heard a great deal about it. Oh, and this is what I'll tell yeah. you people right up front. I didn't hear about the plot. I heard just rave reviews from people like, Matt, I can't believe you've never seen Better Watch Out. I remember it was on Shudder a lot, and people were like, how have you not watched it on Shudder? It's not on Shudder anymore, by the way. I watched this on Peacock, so I got to watch it with ads at the front, and then the rest of the movie was uninterrupted, which was a really nice viewing experience. Shout out to Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> From dongs to you peacocks. Work for peacock. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking peacock. Ah, can you feel it? Um, we watched Better Watch Out. Mark, I'm going to tell you something. And I want to kick off the conversation with this. This movie has a fucking twist in it that is so crazy. It made me stand up. I was in my living room and like a pearl clutching old woman 
when the twist happens and you know the twist when the twist happens i stood up and i was like holy fucking shit because i could not believe because this movie does a crazy ass thing i've ne- i've only seen this in two other movies and these are the movies and i'm going to list those out first so from dust till dawn is a movie that starts out one way it's a very simple kidnapping film hostages on the run great that movie doesn't twist it completely changes over into a totally different movie which is an action horror vampire movie okay same deal i would argue for something a little less something like fight club starts out as one movie and then it completely changes over and it becomes like a homegrown terrorism movie and it fucking changes oh i got another one for you that me, kind of reminds me of this one is what lies beneath remember that shit yeah oh my god that is like yes. the perfect parallel to this movie i think yes i thought a great double feature with better watch out would be the original black christmas because oh, they've I've both... never seen that actually oh my god i By i've the way, seen it many i was times. actually gonna pick that movie but it felt like something that you had watched already so i was like i've watched it yeah that that's a very famous side. slasher i've watched it several times it's a fantastic movie you should definitely watch it maybe that's another classic that we should maybe look to review down the Ooh. line but um dude i this movie has a changeover in it it starts as funny enough both of the movies that we picked kind of involved holiday hostage situations yeah which was very (laughs) weird right because rare exports is kind of a hostage hostage situation and better watch out also has a hostage situation so it starts out as a home invasion movie and that's what i thought this was gonna be i was like oh it's gonna be like a home invasion thing like kind of like a more bloody home alone where the kids have to fight back against invaders and that would have been fine i actually would have loved that but this is what i thought it was going to be actually totally this movie has a lot more on its mind and it wants to do something else it aspires more to something like funny games where it's like look at you look at the things that you're watching now we're going to make you feel guilty for taking pleasure in this and the movie totally changes over and it becomes a funny games-esque hostage situation where and it's very disturbing too dude it is so unsettling let's just let the cat out of the bag the deal is oh, don't forget to hit them spoilers man oh let me hit that goddamn spoiler alert spoiler. i like how we spoiled everything in rare exports with no spoiler alert because yeah, neither of us care sucked. this one <laughs> <laughs> right this one is good so let's hit it again this one deserves spoiler. a spoiler alert. there you go mark the first time in show history mark has demanded a spoiler alert that's how you know he <laughs> yes. likes this fucking movie Okay, what we're about to say, if you've never seen Better Watch Out, <laughs> then you better watch out and not listen to the rest oh, of this shit. episode. It lives up to that title. It does live up to that title. Funny enough, this movie was originally called Safe Neighborhood. I'm not kidding. And they were playing off the line where the kid says, nothing bad ever happens here. It's a safe neighborhood. And when they showed this, it this debuted at Fantastic Fest. And when they showed it to the crowd, the crowd loved the movie. Marketing guy went up to the director at an after party and he said, I love your movie, man, but I hate the title. You want some free advice? Wow. Change it. And he said, what would you call it? He said, I'd call it Better Watch Out. And that's what we got. And how Damn. much more fitting of a title is Better Watch Out? By what the way, a kick-ass holiday horror title. What was cool about it is like, you were talking about the beginning. There, It ta- it misleads you so many different ways at the beginning. And if I, you know what the funny thing is? When I first started watching it, I was like, this looks like a shitty Hallmark movie. And it's like, this kid has this dumb plan to get the girl that's out of his league. And I was like, ah, oh, this is going to suck. The acting was kind of like still. It was a little questionable at first, but it got better. Yeah. How good was that acting by the end? Oh Jesus. God. Every like, fucking totally actor in this it. was fantastic, especially that kid. Don't the let the beginning kid. fool you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And w- so this is what, so we set up this whole thing. Let's do it again. Spoiler. Here's the Spoiler. <laughs> Now that all the spoily people have run away, this movie starts as a home invasion movie where you're watching this kid who's 12, 13 years old and his babysitter evade home invaders. Only he set it all up himself with his friend. There are no home invaders. The home invader is his friend from across the street. And their big plan is to originally it's just to tie up the babysitter and just like molest her and kind of ruin her life before she leaves this is in an effort to make her i guess fall in love with him which is what he thinks is going to happen but i would argue the whole time because of how fucked up he is he knew he was going to kill her that's she's going to leave town where she's going to pack and go i think he knew immediately he was going to kill her i well i think you know what i think it was because the first part he's i slightly disagree with you on that because oh. i honestly think he's kind of like 
he's like one of these narcissists that falls in love with someone but it's really all about him rather than that person feel so because it starts out with the home invasion right and then they're like but it's so he can become the hero of the home invasion and rescue her yes and i think because she still rejects him because he gets drunk and he goes in for that kiss and is ultimately rejected i think because of that that's when he's like i'm gonna kill this bitch that's what he decides to and kill her the, interesting and the whole thing changes from there and then you get to see him try to like plot things out and calling the boyfriend and then the ex-boyfriend and luring them into the house so i think it was he did that all that stuff on the fly because you can tell he kind of you know he towards the end he's starting to forget things because he's doing things on the fly whereas he prefers to plan things out it seems yes. which is why he planned that whole scenario where he be he's seen as this like macho hero that rescued her and if i think she fell for him and and she wasn't able to detect that that was the friend across the street it would be a different ending i all right i i i think i agree with you but I do think there's a part where he's clearly, he knows because he's got, because the, the, this is the thing that makes me think that he knew he was going to kill her immediately, was he's already using the friend from the beginning of the movie, his friend Garrett across the street. He manipulates Garrett and Garrett just wants to be loyal to his friend because he thinks he's doing the right thing. He doesn't realize he's getting roped into like a funny games hostage situation oh, yeah. where he's got to help the friend tie up the babysitter, tie up the boyfriend. He doesn't, he just thinks it's going to be like a quick, funny thing. Cause all throughout the movie, that kid wants to leave, go home. He's always the first one that's like, I got to go. I got to leave. I think, he, by the way, he plays that so well that he whole, nailed it. He nailed it. He, the whole, that whole indecision of like, am I loyal to my friend or how do I extricate myself from this horrific situation right. I'm in? And also and dealing with back. the humanity of it because he knows yeah, it's wrong. Uh, as it, as the, the night escalates, and the psycho kid keeps getting worse and worse and just committing horrible acts. He, you can tell he is just completely beside himself and wants to stop it. Right. Oh, but yeah. I think that kind of manipulation up front of that kid, I think he knew he thought they were going to kill her and kill the boyfriend and be done with it. Uh, that's what I think. I mean, I could see what you're saying where he, the kiss definitely is like a factor that fucks with him because maybe if she'd have kissed him back, not saying that's what I think is right. I'm just saying if that would have yeah. happened, <laughs> maybe it would have stopped the night of horrors. But I don't Disclaimer, think it would have. I do not approve of. I this. do not approve of statutory rape. Please do not kiss your he gets underage. A bit, he gets. By the way, that bit, there are so many scenes that made me so uncomfortable. Like when he starts after he's like kind of drunk, and he's like making moves toward her, and yes. she's like, "No, go." And it's like, "Oh, this is so cringy," and this and he's kid like, is Why? so fucking Why? gross. Yeah. Oh, you know what Seed really got me is when they're when she's tied up and they're like, truth or dare. They're like, grab her tit. Oh my God. That was like that was like some last house on the left shit. I felt yeah. really bad. If you're or triggered other... by that, by the way, or sexual violence of any kind, don't watch this movie. <laughs> yeah, don't. Or there the other scene actually where I mean nothing ultimately occurs in the end, but when he was like, I want to see you fuck her, I was like, Jesus Christ, this what yes. the fuck is this movie? This movie's in insane. How it are goes they to some fucking this? crazy psychopathic places like it really truly remind it's like a holiday funny games um but it really truly like, reminded me of that kids though it's not like at least in funny games they're kind of they're you know they're older they look kind of yeah. creepy and michael stuff. pitt looks like a grown like, ass man yeah <laughs> but these are just like li kids that psychotic are children played by not like 20 year olds this looks like kids playing kids yes and i want to give this main kid a shout out his name is levi miller that kid delivered a, a fucking phenomenal performance. Oh, yeah. We should also say, I thought this was cool. I had no idea because it's been so long. You and I saw this movie. We saw The Visit together. Shyamalan's The Visit. The Babysitter yeah. and Garrett are both in The Visit where they play brother and sister. Oh, Funny enough. Wow. So That's off crazy. of this, they went on to play brother and sister in The Visit. Isn't that funny? Damn. That's nuts. Um, I actually will go to bed. I usually, I, I give Shyam we give Shyamalan some shit on this show, but The Visit I liked. I thought it was pretty good. I thought that was like his kind of his, the beginning of his resurgence. Speaking of scary old it's people like and hanging dong to visit. <laughs> there you go. I had another one of that one. <laughs> hanging dong. Feel it. Top three favorite fil films with an old man penis. <laughs> <laughs> the visit. The visit. Rare exports. Rare exports. Prancer day of the dong. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's what they call the old man dong in Day of the Dong, Prancer. What's it called, Prancer? <laughs> I'm prancing it around, baby. <laughs> Mark, I also wanted to talk about, before we uh, get derailed, <laughs> as I just did. I'm sorry I derailed. <laughs> On Better Watch Out, I also liked that. So you may be asking yourself, well, how does this fit into the holiday, right? It's very clear Rare Exports is about evil Santas. How does this fit into the holiday? And it does not only by setting it at Christmas, which I think is just the bare minimum for to be considered a holiday horror movie. This goes a step beyond that, where it's commenting on other Christmas movies, right? especially Home Alone, which is featured very prominently in what I would call the most shocking gag in the movie, which is in the beginning of the film, uh, the psycho kid and his neighbor are debating about the paint can scene in Home Alone, where Kevin McAllister throws the paint cans over the banister and hits Harry and Marv in the face, right? And he's like, that would fucking break your face, man. He's like, no, it wouldn't. And then later, once they have the boyfriend tied up, and if he's already been tortured, they jabbed a pencil through his cheek, which was so fucked up. Oh, he's yeah. sitting there bleeding. He's pissed himself, right? If it can't get any more degrading, now they pull him and his chair out to do the home alone. The kid even says, you're home aloneing him? And he takes two full paint cans, ties them up, and he says, they're going to Mythbuster this shit. They're going to see if it really works, right? The first paint can goes over and completely misses him. And now the tension's at a 10, because if oh it had God, been two inches like over, 11, yeah. it would have nailed him, right? And I thought, okay, something's going to happen. Like, that guy's going to tip himself over in the chair, or Garrett, the neighbor kid's going to pull him out of the way. No, this movie pays off, and Home Alone's, quote-unquote, Home Alone's someone, it hits him in the face with a paint can, and it's made all the worst because it's off-camera. <laughs> When yeah, it happens, and you just see that blood and yellow paint dripping down it's his legs. so unsettling. Too. Oh, God. And damn the this. sound of that crunch, too. Yes. And then there's horrible. a couple other shots where it just shows like, OK, here's where the can hit the face. And you can tell by the splatter pattern on the ground what occurred. And it's just like, oh, oh God. You know how yes. Terrifier shows you stuff? This movie is way more effective because it doesn't show you stuff. Yes. Yes. And also the way that it plays with your holiday expectations like the fact that the psycho kid is so good at presenting himself he can hide all the all the horrors inside as he presents himself to the carolers and he's like you guys eat some hot cocoa hope you have a great night like that whole scene was disturbing as fuck to me because of how well it's acted and how he was able to just completely turn it on right it was like inhuman it was amazing it's or when he's fu- dancing around doing the set yes, with the, the body when he's oh got the fucking goodness. bat and he's dancing around it's like fucking american psycho um this is a great fucking movie like you want to talk about a good movie by the way i also said some other movies i think they play off of by the way they play off of a little bit of uh, black christmas the original black christmas especially tying her up with the christmas lights and i this may be a stretch but it feels like it plays off a little love actually which is a holiday christmas movie about unrequited love and I got those kind of vibes in the beginning of the movie where I was like, that's kind of funny. It almost feels like it's commenting on each of these holiday movies. Um, if you've seen the movie and I missed one that you think it's commenting on, let us know because I would love to, I love that kind of shit. Tell me the other holiday movies if there's any I missed. Um, they don't even watch, I thought for sure they would wa- be watching a Christmas movie or a Christmas special, but I guess those were too expensive. They couldn't get the rights. So they're <laughs> watching like a fake horror movie within the movie that was made specifically for the film. Mark, what did you think? Would like, would you recommend Better Watch Out? I think Better Watch Out is it's not only a good Christmas horror film; it's actually just a good horror film. Yeah, and it just absolutely. happens to be set in in a Christmas environment. But like outside, I think it's like a legitimately good horror film. And if you like thrillers and you love those like home invasion movies, you should definitely check it out. I think it it. I don't know. It's very, it's probably one of the most unique movies I've seen recently because I couldn't really tell what was going to happen next. And most of the horror films, you can kind of like at least guess what's going to happen. Yeah. This one threw me for a loop on several occasions. Like I'm so glad you liked what it. The man. Hell was gonna happen. I didn't know where you were going to come out on this. I, I had a feeling of, oh, the other movie, by the way, it's, it's not a Christmas movie. The other movie they're totally uh, emulating, I think, and in, in a good way, I think is Scream. Remember the original oh, Scream? Yeah. When the yeah, when the boyfriend's true. tied up with the t- with the duct tape outside, 
Yeah. Whole deal. And the fact that it's Plus so it's self-referential. Yeah, exactly. Yes, it feels like Scream. Also, another Home Alone thing, too, is when uh, she has the spiders. They hit, there's a oh, spider yeah. roaming around right. through the house, and eventually that comes to a head, right? Uh, it's a fucking awesome movie. Uh, I would highly, highly, highly recommend Better Watch Out. I mean, if you've listened this far and you haven't seen it, we've blown the big spoiler for you. I don't think that would ruin the movie, but I think it's so much better knowing nothing. I knew nothing yeah, going into this. I agree with this. you. A, a spoiler won't ruin this movie because it's that good, but yeah. it's much more enjoyable if you know nothing. Like, I wouldn't even, I mean, it's too late because whoever listens already heard the spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> but if you were to tell other people outside of the show to watch it, I would definitely tell them go in as cold as possible. Yes. As cold as Christmas. Oh, 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 oh. can you yeah. feel it? <laughs> Mark, I. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> wait i also want to <laughs> i also want to say something about I, I that felt like we were wrapping up better watch out but i have some of a couple of other things i want to say is i love how this like edgar Allan poe like cask of amontillado like this kid is like the joker he meticulously plans every detail to the point where I love that sequence at the end of the movie where you're like, how's he going to get out of this? Because he didn't intend on amassing such a huge body count. By the end of this movie, there's <laughs> four or five people that are dead. The parents are, by the way, where are the parents you're asking? They're at a Christmas party far away. And how's he going to get away with it? Don't you worry. Now he knows bedtime's coming. He knows the parents are on their way back. He's killed everyone in the house. And we see in painstaking detail how he's not only going to clean up the mess so that he looks like he's been completely removed from the situation, how he's going to frame the ex-boyfriend for the murders of all the people, including his friend. That was so tragic when that Garrett kid, when he shoots Garrett and that kid is like, he's just so he's shaky. like surprised that he's going to die too. And it's like, yes. Oh my God, that is yes. uh, extremely disturbing. And, it, and then when he blames him, he's like, this was all because you smoked weed in the kitchen. That kid, by the way, that kid's performance, when he gets angry and his his voice starts breaking yes it's it's actually even more terrifying for some reason yes when he screams kid. fuck you like 50 times yeah but it, the thing is it's like <laughs> because it has that like that squeakiness from the voice breaking it makes it say, seem even crazier because it's like oh it is it's like a legit kid yes that's how they sound when they're freaking out yes dude they Damn. fucking shriek everything's like a high-pitched <laughs> yeah. shriek he's goddamn kids because the balls haven't dropped you see the balls ain't dropped so, <laughs> so the pitch is high up there you see <laughs> the, the, even uh who plays the the girl she i don't uh wait i have to look up her name but she's from the visit she's fantastic she was Oli really olivia good. de young is her the name the whole cast was awesome in this yeah, and like she plays great. the the tough character really well especially that ending where she gives the middle finger i was like i love yeah, that moment shit. that was so good that moment I was so happy. I was like, this kid. Is but did you see good. the mid credit scene? I did not. I didn't realize there was a You're mid credit kidding. scene. I'm going to tell you right now. It, the credits started and I just left it on because I was like too lazy to reach the remote. I was just like sitting there with the movie kind of like digesting it. There's a quick mid credit scene where the kid, you know, because we the last we saw was the girl getting wheeled away into the gurney and she flips him off and he's like, oh, fuck. He goes downstairs the cops are still there and he's like mom i'm worried about whatever her name is oh i think we shit. should go to the hospital and check on her and you're like oh fuck this little fucker's gonna try and kill her at the hospital damn that was the mid credit scene fucking oh, crazy there you go oh. mid credits for better watch out so there you go <laughs> <laughs> this better watch out mid credits but i already told you what it is whoops <laughs> that's how we do it Spoiler alert after this point. I wish I wish instead it said Prancer. <laughs> Prancer, Long John Silvers. All this talk of Prancer. Let's watch a trailer. <laughs> Dude, I swear this was a real movie. Prancer. Prancer, god damn it. <laughs> Here we go. Oh man. In a world. We're print. Is that fucking Abe Vigoda in a Santa disguise? <laughs> How many Abe Vigodas do you have in this movie? <laughs> Jesus H. It should have okay, an Abe Vigoda movie. I'm not watching anymore because I'm honestly going to watch Abe Vigoda in Prancer. <laughs> and uh, you all should too. <laughs>
Hey, Fagoda. Stars in Prancer. Mark? <laughs> Mark, shit. we got some lovely uh, comments from people. Is that it? Do you have, wait, do you have anything else to say about Better Watch Out? I almost called go it Better Call it. Saul. <laughs> better Go Watch is what you would call this movie. Mark, do you have anything to say about Better Call Saul? No. I haven't seen it yet. I've never no seen spoilers, Better Call please. Saul. <laughs> so on Instagram, at the Matt and Mark Movie Show, we asked, hey, you know, uh, you have Rex. What are your holiday movie traditions? And fuckers showed up. Nice. So I wanted to quickly read them out. Our buddy Patrick M. Hello, Patrick M. By the way, I want to say Patrick M. I don't know if you saw this, Mark. On Instagram, I put up a reel where I was trying to give away my old National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation Blu-ray. And fucking nobody entered except for Patrick M. <laughs> so by, by default, he won. <laughs> so Patrick M., keep a lookout because I'm sending you the Blu-ray of Christmas Vacation, buddy, and you can enjoy it. Patrick M. says one of his favorite adaptations of A Christmas Carol is Scrooge from 1970, a big old British 70s musical with script, music, and lyrics from Leslie Brucuse, Brucusey? who would write songs for Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory the following year. That's pretty cool. Wow. Albert Finney as Ebenezer and Alec Guinness as damn, Jacob Marley. Really damn good. Damn, Patrick M. Dude, have yeah. you seen that version of Scrooge, Mark? No, I have not. But now I will, Patrick. I love this. I love A Christmas Carol. I like to watch the different versions of it. Muppet Christmas Carol is the best by far. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. It is. Uh, Diabolical Pod. Our friends at Diabolical Pod said, my family and I like to watch Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate yes. Events at Christmas. What keep me watermelon surprise? I uh, it. <laughs> not sure why, as it doesn't feature the holidays, but it feels like festive to us. I agree Mark, with that statement. Yeah, you really like that. You're a big fan of that it's one, It's an right? amazing film. I love that movie. Everything about it is awesome. Thank you, Diabolical Pod. Our buddy, Tommy Nuggets. Yeah, Tommy. Tommy says, I always include non- Xmas movies that take place during the holiday, like Batman Returns. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah, Batman Returns is a Christmas movie, right? Batman Returns, oh, of course. Cobra, which I forget, takes place at Christmas. Oh shit! The Last really? Boy Scout and Last Action Hero. Yep, got some good Christmas stuff there. And Last others Action in my Hero holiday movies. thon. Excited for the Ep Bros. Thank you, Tommy. Thanks, Tommy. I'm with Tommy on that one, dude. Batman Returns. That's a really good selection right there. Has got some fucking sick Christmas imagery in it. (laughs) I also love Batman Returns so much. The Red Triangle Circus Gang. I love that shit. When Batman turns the Batmobile in reverse and he sets that devil guy on fire. You know what I'm talking about? (laughs) The devil guy's like burning in the toy store. That shit's awesome. Fuck you, devil guy. And lastly, our buddies at the Love of Cinema. Dude, I got to give a quick crossover promo. I was on the Love of Cinema last week. While we were oh, off, right. the Love of Cinema invited me to talk about the new movie, The Menu, starring Ray Fiennes, Anya Taylor Joy. Okay, you've heard of her. Mark, you just saw her butt in The Northman. <laughs> just a cute little rump. There you go. Can you feel it? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, and we, Love of Cinema and me, Dave and Jeff, John was not there. I was sitting in for John. So if you want to hear me talk about The Menu, Go and listen to the Love of Cinema's The Menu episode, guest starring me. Dude, we gave you a huge shout out in the episode too, Mark. Because we were like, they were like, Mark has got the most buzzes. I didn't beat your buzz count. I tried. (laughs) So your record remains, buddy. Your record remains. Yeah, awesome. (laughs) Our buddies at the Love of Cinema had a couple questions for us. They said, is Elf on your Christmas Mount Rushmore? What is on your Christmas Mount Rushmore? And I thought that was interesting. So Mark... Think of Christmas movies. These could be traditional, non-traditional, but movies on your Mount Rushmore. So I think because there are what, four? There are four heads on Mount Rushmore, right? Let's have you name four. What's on your, what are your four Christmas movies on your Christmas Mount Mount Rushmore? And if you want, I'll go first. Okay, yeah, you go first. Here are the four movies, and this is no joke. Mark knows this. My favorite Christmas movie of all time is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. It is hands down my favorite Christmas movie ever made. I watch it every year on Christmas Eve. It's become a tradition. The producer in the booth and I watch on Christmas Eve. I also watch it a couple times beforehand, but it's our big Christmas Eve watch. I actually just got the 4K of it, which is why I was giving away my old Blu-ray and only one person entered. Thank you all for (laughs) not entering. (laughs) Whatever, man. Patrick Gum's all the richer. He's got Christmas Vacation on Blu-ray. He's going to enjoy it with Cousin (laughs) Ed. 
Uh, Christmas uh, Vacation would be first on my Mount Rushmore. Second on my Mount Rushmore of Christmas movies. You're going to think I'm kidding. I'm not fucking kidding. Gremlins. Yes, it is oh, a Christmas shit. movie. It takes place at Christmas. It's just a movie that I think of as Christmas. I mean, the minute you turn that movie on, it's Christmas. Um, and there's some great Christmas imagery in it. You know, you also know I love Gremlins and I love Joe Dante. Funny enough, it's Joe Dante's birthday today. Happy birthday, oh, wow. Joe Dante. Holy shit. <laughs> so Christmas Vacation, Gremlins. Um, I would also put up there, you know, it's going to sound corny, but I'm, but I, it's something I watch every year. I think that's how I'm going. Like movies I have to see every year and that's the rankin bass 1964 rudolph the red-nosed reindeer christmas special oh, it's one of my I, you classics. know i love stop mosh it's one of my absolute favorites um and lastly a non-traditional christmas pick mark knows this this is my favorite holiday horror movie of all time one of my favorite movies ever made it's krampus i love krampus i watch every year i usually watch twice a year i watch on the day of krampus krampus knocked um <laughs> and then i also watch Usually around the holidays, like day before Christmas Eve, I'll catch Krampus and I'll like have a whole like naughty thing going where I get like a cocktail. I'll have like a hot toddy and I'll have like spicy <laughs> gingerbread cookies and I'll watch Krampus. Krampus came to punish. Um, so, yeah, that's on my Christmas Mount Rushmore. There you go. Mark, what's on your Christmas Mount Rushmore? All right. So let's see. I'm going to go with Jingle All the Way as number oh, one. Yes. That's something I have to watch every year. It's dope. This uh, the next one's gonna sound really odd, but it's my well, it used to be my tradition till COVID. But I would get dressed in a suit, I'd go to the Metrograph, I'd have dinner there, then I'd have an espresso, or I'd have like a drink of some kind, like a whiskey sour, and then I would go see Eyes Wide Shut, and then I would walk home. Wow. Afterward, but that right. movie I would see like every Christmas hands down eyes wide shut i forget it's a movie that takes place all the fucking in there lots of old man dong in that one as well (laughs) right and then my third one would be die hard just because it's fucking awesome yes it is awesome who wants are you one of those people who who swear and say that it's just a straight up christmas movie or is it just a movie that takes place at christmas i think it just takes place during christmas but it does have those very christmasy jokes in it but that's besides the point. I think it's just an awesome movie. And I'm glad that it takes place during Christmas because most Christmas movies I'm really not interested in. Like you can only see a Christmas story how many times after how many years? Yes. When your family just leaves it on for like 24 hours. Cool. Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, I feel like I've seen that one too much and I've seen and I love Elf, but I've seen it too much. I've seen it too goddamn much. So no, Elf is not on my Christmas Mount Rushmore. It's not on Mark's either. What's, what's your last one on your Mount Rushmore? This one's going to be stupid, but ever since we saw it, it's like one of my favorite movies, which is Santa's Slay. Dude, Santa <laughs> Slay is fucking awesome. Bill Are you Goldberg. kidding? Dude, okay, wait. I'm going to add Santa Slay, a fifth face, the face of Bill Goldberg. To, to fuck. Dude, I want you to know on my Amazon <laughs> wish list, Santa Slay, which is only available on DVD, is on my wish list. Really? Santa Slay There's is no on Blu-ray? my wish list. There's no Blu ray of Santa Slay. You can either watch Damn. it on streaming if you're lucky like we did last year. We actually reviewed Santa Slay. If you want to hear us talk about it, listen to the 2021 yeah, check it out. Santa movie grab bag. And we talked about Santa Slay in depth. We loved it. Um, you could either get it on DVD or stream it if you're lucky. Mark, <laughs> Love of Cinema also says, look at the IMDb photo of Vangelis and tell me, try to tell me you'd rather Ross and Reznor than him. He's talking about Atticus Ross and Trent. Resner, but let's look up Vangelis on IMDb and see what Jeff's talking about. Do you say Vangelis or Vangelis? Holy Jesus! Whoa. He's gigantic. Oh my god! He looks like one of the guys in Rare Exports that they <laughs> yeah. that's chasing the kid, butt naked, chasing that kid. He's one of those evil Santas. You must not anger the Santa Claus <laughs> in the Finland. We must be nice to Santa Claus. Can you hear my cat meowing at the door, by the way? No. He's just obsessively meowing. He's like, hey, fuckers, let me in. Uh, it's always when we're recording, I'll see like the cat jumping in the background. Yeah. And it's like, he got locked out of the podcast studio and he's pissed. Oh, shit. <laughs> because I knew he was going to act a goddamn fool while we were trying to record this episode. Do you see, like, the paw coming underneath the door? Yeah, like, dude, the paw's been coming under. Usually Jess Wait, is here really? to run interference, but she's at, she's at an appointment. 
Oh, shit. Um, so yeah, Vangelis. Uh, thank you, Jeff, from Love of Cinema, for showing us what Vangelis looks like, which is a Christmas gift unto itself. <laughs> Mark, any comments on Vangelis? Like a, a touchy feely Santa. Oh, he's touchy feely, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, I think it's that time. Shall we wreck it? Yes, sir. I am totally down. Here we go. I'm gonna wreck it. Wreck it. Wreck it. Well, I'm going facts, not recommendations, but thank you. Can you feel it? <laughs> Mark, uh, how many wrecks do you have? Let me see. I Oh, Jesus, I have a lot. I have six. So, and that, well, technically I have five, because on my rec list, I, I'll, I'll kick us off real quick. I just want to say... I do recommend, I highly recommend the new movie, The Menu. I really liked it. Spoiler alert. Um, If you want to hear me talk in depth again, go check me out on The Love of Cinema. They're our friends. We love them. They're great guys. They had me on to talk about it, and I wound up really enjoying the movie. So I highly recommend The Menu. Do I think you need to rush out and see it in theaters? Yes, I actually do. Because as you would hear me say in that episode, if you went to listen to it, it's better with a crowd. It's a movie that works great with a crowd. So definitely, if you can, if you have time, go catch the menu in theaters before it goes to streaming. Oh, shit. I better move my... So there you go. Mark, do you want to start the Rex? Oh, shit. Let me just double check. Or do you want me to start? You want me to start? Yeah, I think you should start. You're like, you start, goddamn you. (laughs) Okay, I'm going to start us off first with a holiday... You know, it's a holiday episode, so this is a holiday pick. I watched the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special on Disney... Plus. Mark, have you watched Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special? No, I have not. But after it is you so sent me goddamn a text, fun. And I was like, oh shit, it must be good. It's I have so to check fun. It out. It's only 45 minutes. It's quick. And unlike other Marvel stuff, like yes, you obviously have to be familiar with the other Guardians movies, but you don't need to be familiar with I had to have watched She Hulk and Shang Chi and all these other 10 <laughs> goddamn things. No. As long as you're familiar with the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. You will be right at home in the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. It's funny. It's heartfelt. Fucking James Gunn is a genius. You know I love James Gunn. I'm like a total fanboy for him. Oh, yeah. Um, Apparently, he wrote the script for this, he said, in a couple of hours. I don't know if he was joking. Because the script is incredibly tight. It feels like someone really took care to craft great jokes in it. Because there are so many funny moments here. Like, there's no missed opportunity. Every opportunity you can think of to have the guardians in the holiday setting they do and it's awesome wow so i can't say enough about it it also looks gorgeous it looks like it has the budget of a guardians of the galaxy movie you know with the marvel vfx they're none of it sloppy like compare that to i think i told you this i tried to watch the goddamn santa claus's tv show on disney plus and it's oh, really? horrible i turned it off i made it through oh, the first episode right. And I couldn't go any further. And one of the reasons, besides it being painful, you want to talk about painful, like rare exports, dude, was half the VFX in the Santa Claus's pilot episode are unfinished. That's not a joke. So it varies from shot to shot. So some shots, you'll be like, wow, the reindeers look really cool. And the next shot, like within the same scene, like the coverage or whatever, that angle, somebody else will be talking and they look unrendered and weird. They look like previs. Wow. And I'm sorry, Tim Allen looks weird, and he's weird in it. Um, And the acting in it is terrible. The majority of the actors, and I'm sorry to say it, they're like Disney kids. They're like kid actors, and they're fucking terrible. Wait, I thought this was supposed to be like, you know, like there are these classic. uh, Yeah, these are classic movies. Tons of people watch. I love the original Santa Claus movies. Quality. It's not. That's what I thought. Uh, it's not. So I just want to compare that quickly to Guardians of the Galaxy because you have one example of how to do a new holiday show and give it the love and care that it needs to be awesome. And then you have the cheap cutthroat way of doing it, which is what they did for the or the cut rate way. And that's what the Santa Claus is. is. So oh my God. Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special want to highly recommend. Mark, what's your first rec? Actually, you know what? I'm going to wreck something that you wrecked me. I started watching it with my mom, which was the mole. And oh, you're right. shit, dude. It's so dumb. And the people are like, you know, they're all like the good looking kind of like goofy people. 
that are just there for the drama. Holy shit. It's but how hilarious. good is it though? How good is it? It's it's crazy how it kind of looks like a movie. Yes, doesn't and it? It like the you production were values through the charts. Time. Yeah, yeah off the I charts, was rather. really surprised at that because most of the, the shows I watch, it's like, you know, it's in like a really crappy studio setup or they have like, you know, tons of bright light. It's not moody lighting at all. This one is like, you know, they're doing like these crazy drone shots. It looks like a movie. And even when yes. they were doing that, I got to episode three where they have to, I think it was like the midway through there, they have to, I think, no, no, it's episode two where they're, they're locked up and they have to guess the passcode. Yes. And some of these puzzles where I was like, shit, how would you even, some of the, the information they give you, it's like, this sounds impossible. Okay. So now you know what I'm going to ask. So yeah. you said you're watching with your mom. Does your mom like the mole? Yeah, she likes it a lot. Dude, actually. I know. I told you. you totally right. This is it's... something you can watch with your family. Like, if there's something about it that's so entertaining, but it's like PG enough. It's safe. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody can enjoy the mole. It's a fucking great season of TV. I now don't want to say anything because I don't want to. I don't want to reveal who the. Mo- now you heard him, by the way. Okay. Oh my god. Dude, that was okay. fucking hilarious. I'm sorry about that, everybody. I'm back now. Okay, Mark. So you're watching The Mole. You're recommending The Mole. Oh, most definitely. That was... You know what? It's very engrossing. You think it's like... It kind of feels cheesy at first. But then as you start watching the challenges and like seeing them take this... There's a quiz where they have to discern who The Mole is. And it, it like I said, it's very engrossing. And you're on the edge of your seat sometimes for those elimination rounds. Yes. It, it, I don't dude, know why I got so into this show. It's fucking awesome. That's why I love... Okay, I love that you love this. Because I got so into this. I We watched this while we were while we had COVID. And we got super, super fucking into it. Uh, dude, every episode... They're going to keep raising the stakes. It's going to keep getting better and better. <laughs> Wait till you see the end. You're never going to guess who the fucking mole is. Oh, you is. finished it. I'm finished. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. I'm finished. Um, speaking of finishing shows, my next rec, I finished. We binged it in two nights. The producer in the booth and I watched Wednesday, the new show on Netflix. Oh, wow. This was recommended to us by Dave from Love of Cinema. Uh, my wife is a big Adams Family fan. I like the movies fine enough. They're like, they're cool movies, but I don't like love them. Some people are obsessed with them. My wife is one of those people. She loves the Adams Family movies from the 90s. And so I knew we were going to probably eventually watch it but dave from love of cinema messaged me messaged us i think you're on that chain too and he was like you gotta fucking watch wednesday it's awesome and i was like how good can this really be dude wednesday is fucking incredible it's a fantastic show it is so ridiculously entertaining and the production value on it is exceptional tim burton directed i want to say the first five episodes but it's got his fingerprints all over it it is a tim burton show But I'm not talking about new shitty Tim Burton because I was like, what's the last great Tim Burton thing that I think he's made? Like I loved, I know the last great thing I think I saw him make was maybe Sweeney Todd, I think, because he's made some other kind of crappy things after that that I didn't really care for. But um, it's been a long time. Dude, this feels like the Tim Burton of old. This feels like Edward Scissorhands, Beetlejuice. This feels like classic Tim Burton. And what he did was something really cool. Um, It's almost like watching a kind of a gothic noir detective story, except the detective happens to be Wednesday Adams from the Adams family. Damn, that sounds pretty dope. (laughs) It's really cool. The world is beautifully realized. The cast is awesome. Jenna Ortega from Scream, the new Scream that we saw. She plays Wednesday. She's fantastic in it. The new Adams family casting is really good. Catherine Zeta-Jones is Morticia. Luis Guzman is Gomez Adams. Oh, man, that sounds awesome. <laughs> There's a special appearance by someone who plays Uncle Fester. I won't reveal who it is because I was really pleasantly surprised by the casting. It's fucking awesome. And trust me, if you start watching it, you will fucking tear through it in like a day. Really? It's so good. Yeah, it's so good. I hope they come back for a season two. So big time recommend for me for Wednesday. Shit, okay, I shall check that out, because I've actually heard a lot of good things about that show. It's awesome. (laughs) It's awesome. Now, I don't know if you could watch this. I don't know if I would say this is mom approved. It's very bloody. There's a lot of cursing. It's like a rated R Wednesday Addams detective movie. That sounds fucking crazy, (laughs) but that's exactly what it is. weird. (laughs) That's exactly what it is. Mark, what's next up for you? I have a movie that I believe 
you really like too. I just I just decided that one day I was like, you know what? I haven't seen in a while the thing. Yeah. So I just popped that on, and holy crap, it is good. How did you? God where damn, did you watch I love it? That movie. Where did you I watch it? I have a copy of my own. Oh, I have a, a good for a you Blu-ray. So, dude, I was able to watch on that because I was I'm cleaning through all my stuff, and I was like, all right, let's pop this in and watch it. And Fuck holy yeah. shit, a movie it's, that it's, just celebrated its 40th anniversary. Yeah, that's crazy. And yeah. you know what? I was sad that I missed it in the theater. Ugh! Apparently, so, though, it was a good thing you missed it because it was like they played a really shitty pan and scan version of it. <laughs> they really? like played it off a DVR. Yeah, it was like it made national headlines because people were so really? upset with the 40th anniversary transfer of the thing on the big screen. Was people this were, a fathom event? People, yeah, it was a fathom event. But like, unlike Wrath of Khan, which was a fathom event you and I both went to and looked fantastic. Apparently, the thing looked like it looked like 480p (laughs) there were like it had the wrong letterboxing on it so though so a lot of the frame a lot of the information was missing there were people telling other people on twitter and stuff to stay home and just watch it at home and that they would have a better look at the thing so yeah wow well, that's Dude, sad. how did it hold up, man? Were you watching it and you were just fucking loving every it's second? It's one of those things where it's just like, you know, you're like, I'm going to watch the first five minutes just to like, yep. oh, I don't yeah. know, there's something about just watching like an opening to a movie. I do that with like um, Alien Covenant. I love watching the opening scene. But this one, I was like, okay, I'm going to watch the opening because I love it. And then I just kept watching it. And I was like, oh, I'm going to wait till that scene is where he's doing the tests with the Petri dishes. And it's yes. like, okay, I'll stop. And I just watched the whole thing all the way through. <laughs> Well, the Petri dish scene takes place pretty late in the movie. Yeah, I know. That's how long I was <laughs> sticking your, through it. I was like, okay, I'll just keep, I just kept giving myself these like cutoffs. I'm only going to watch I until it says directed followed. by John Carpenter. <laughs> That's it. I'm just going to watch up to that point and then I'll turn it off. Okay. <laughs> Holy shit. It's so fucking it. good though. It's like, it's one of those rare movies where it's like that borderline of when like physical effects were at their like peak. Yes. And Rob Bottin, like, right? Rob Bottin, I think, did those. Everything starts to turn into a CG nightmare afterward. It was like, oh my god. That's also a great wintry movie to watch, right? You exactly. feel so isolated on the Arctic base with them. McCready's out there with his bottle of whiskey playing chess on the computer and shit. It feels <laughs> like Christmas in a way, in a weird way. <laughs> now that I think about it. Oh shit, it's a Christmas movie. It's kind of a Christmas <laughs> movie, right? Your hideous relatives come over. Maybe one of them's <laughs> the thing. Maybe not. <laughs> You're trying to throw them all out. <laughs> You're trying to get the fuck out of here. I just want to play chess on my computer. Get the fuck out. <laughs> I love that you watched The Thing. Now you're making me want to watch it. You have to see it again. It's so damn good. I just got, well, not just got, but a few months ago, I got the Steelbook 4K for the 40th anniversary. And I haven't cracked it open yet. It's still sitting it's, in the plastic oh my wrap. God. How many of these do you have sealed? At least like, half every my collection. Dude, at least half my collection it's is sealed. Plastic. And some of them I buy if I know I want to watch, I'll buy two. One to watch and one to seal. That's wow. just on the shelf. I have like you, a dummy sir, copy. Are a true collector. You, sir, are truly a waster of money. <laughs> you, sir. You, sir, have disposable <laughs> income. You, sir, have wasted your retirement. You will be old and tearing tickets at a, yeah, right. Movie theaters want to exist in the future. <laughs> you will be old and working at Long John Silver's. Damn, that was a really sad statement, Matt. Jesus. Mark, my next rec. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> on Thanksgiving Day, since we didn't cook, my wife and I went out to dinner. It was awesome. Since we didn't cook, we had the whole day to do whatever we wanted. And one of the things we did, it was my favorite thing we did over the Thanksgiving break. Jess and I sat down, we ate pie, and we watched Goldeneye. (laughs) Oh, nice. It was fucking awesome. We just sat there with like, we were like such rich kids. We like sat there with two heaping pieces, pecan pie, cherry pie, and we were just eating pie, watching Pierce Brosnan kick fucking ass as Goldeneye. (laughs) And it was so awesome. We were just geeking out because we both love Goldeneye. And we were like rewinding scenes and quoting along, you know, like... We wanted to watch the tank chase, so we watched it twice because we love that <laughs> shit so much. Golden Eye with pie, golden pie, dude. I highly recommend. Get yourself a big ass <laughs> slice of pie, a little ice cream, sit down and watch Golden Eye in 4K. It looks so good. <laughs> I watched it. I own a digital copy of it, and it's uh, they upresed it to UHD, and it looks so fucking awesome. I, you know what? Those are to me the most entertaining ones. 
Yes, and the, they also kind of scream like, ones are don't the Bond fun. movies kind of scream Thanksgiving? Like, don't you remember the days where Thanksgiving, like TBS, the Superstation, would just show uh, James Bond movies like all day? Don't you remember that? It's like, god damn. And then they, they hit the Roger Moore part, and you're like, yes. god damn. You're how like, many I guess I could skip Roger the next Moore. eight hours of this. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, anyway, we wanted to put it on because we were actually Jeez. talking about it the night before. Jess and I were like, remember the days where you would like, be at someone's house for Thanksgiving and you would flip between the football game and the B- James Bond marathon. And I was oh like, my God, I totally forgot about, I was like, why, surfing. why wouldn't we just do that? I said, nothing's stopping us. We can watch golden eye and eat pie. And she was like, that's exactly what we're going to fucking do. And that's what we did. And it was awesome. I highly recommend both eat some pie and watch golden eye. <laughs> um, I was also so into my viewing of golden eye that the next day I listened to the golden eye song, the Tina Turner song, like several times in the car. Wow. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, Mark, what's your next rec? My next rec is going to be I, this one. This one, I'm going to be honest, is a very weird recommendation because it's like teeter totters. I saw a movie on Tubi called Southern Comfort, which was kind of pitched as this like, oh, it's kind of like a deliverance style movie. And it sort of is, but there's, I'll be honest, it kind of starts out, the kills in this movie are awesome. They're very visceral. Mm. And they feel like, you feel the impact. It's And they're very jarring and kind of, and kind of disturbing because it's all physical effects. Um, but in between that, it's the most unlikable cast ever. Whoa, so, Southern Comfort? The, I've never heard of this, but I want to watch it now. It's with Powers booth and um he's everybody in this company they're they're like the national reserves they they all look demented like they're also the bad guys but oh this also you would love it because it takes place in louisiana on the bayou on the bayou baby these like what are these these, i guess they run into they're going on a maneuver and they run into these i one i mean one like i said super unlikable and one of the worst if you were like thinking of, oh, is the National Guard, are they like, you know, good guys are they that the good are guys? Uh, put together well? It's like, no, these people make the National Guard look like a bunch of idiots. Oh, yeah, I think Keith Carradine's in it, too. And Keith motherfucking Carradine. Holy shit, this movie looks out, awesome. It's It looks gorgeous. Try to, if you can find like a good Ooh, Shout copy Factory. It, so. Shout Factory released a Blu-ray of oh, Southern shit. Comfort. Yeah, that, that's okay. I love so this tagline. So if you line. can find a good copy, do it. It's it's the land of hospitality unless you don't belong there. That pretty much uh, describes America, like the middle, the entire. Where did you watch this? America. <laughs> I watched it on Tubi, and it's directed oh, by your favorite Walter Tubi. Hill. Hey, good old yeah. Walter Hill. That's where I find all my good weird shit. <laughs> like that's the land of opportunity, baby. I can fast forward two minutes and nineteen seconds. Yeah. I can watch movies. By the with way, ads. don't let this little crappy trailer fool you it's actually a good looking film and the ending the last part of it the last few minutes are extremely tense and it's like okay that slow build up to that ending was like very it made you feel very uncomfortable it's it's really good but there's also a lot of you know weird strange things about it so wow dude okay you've turned me on to something i've never heard of this movie and now i'm super interested it's Southern really Comfort. Odd. From 1981, <laughs> directed by Walter Hill. Mark, next up for me is a movie that you and I have talked quite a bit about, and you just put on your Mount Rushmore. I watched Jingle All the Way. This is an yeah. annual watch for me. <laughs> um, like I said, I said this a little bit on the Love of Cinema episode that I was just on, but I was like, hey, I don't start watching Christmas shit. My general rule is I start watching on Thanksgiving Day. Once Santa comes out, on the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade float. That to me is the official <laughs> start of Christmas movie season. This has been like this in my head since I was a kid. So wow. um, once that happened, we watched GoldenEye on Thanksgiving. And then the next day, I decided to watch Jingle All the Way. And I've watched, this is one of yeah. my all-time favorite movies, but I just <laughs> had to watch it. But I wanted to point something out. I want to, I'm not, listen, you've heard us recommend this movie on the show so many times. Mark literally just recommended it to you in this episode. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that again, but I want to bring this up. This movie used to be able to be watched on Disney Plus. It's not there anymore. 
If you what? if you go on Disney Plus and you fucking search Jingle All the Way, all that's going to come up is Jingle All the Way 2. If you look for Jingle All the Way, you're not going to find it to stream. And this is the problem. Mark and I have joked about this. Even when we reviewed it on our old podcast 15 million years ago, we reviewed Jingle <laughs> All the Way. And one of the things we talked about was the fact that at the end of this movie, there are two super, super, super inappropriate lines. It's just part of the era, and it's something that endears us to it. It's A, when Booster gets beat up, and they say, nobody likes you, and then they use a pejorative that will get us kicked off Spotify that I'm not going to say. But they <laughs> one kid screams it at Booster. You know what I'm talking about, right? It's it's a three-letter yeah, word. Saying it. <laughs> yeah, we're not saying it. But they say, nobody likes you. And then they're talking about Booster while they're kicking him on the floor. And also, right before that, Booster, the actor who plays Booster, says something like, uh, I'm sweating more than a dog in a Chinese restaurant. Oh I'm, I'm willing to bet Disney had no idea those lines were in the movie when they originally had it on the service. And I'm betting people complained. And I bet that if it ever goes back up on Disney+, Plus, I will bet you right now $20 cold hard cash. If it goes back up on Disney+, Plus, those lines either won't be there or they will flub some other line over those two lines. And I think that's exactly it. But that's what's fucking dangerous now, man. If you just rely on streaming to watch your favorite movies, they're going to take them down and change them because as society and the times are changing, they're going to, you know, people are going to just find problems with anything. And it just sucks that now people who love Jingle All the Way are never going to be able to see it in its original form unless you own that shit on physical media like I do, which is how I watched it. That was the best ad for physical media. Yes, ever, it really is. <laughs> if you don't believe <laughs> and me, it's so true. Go, go check it out. Go to Disney Plus right now. You won't find it. It's gone. It used to be there. It's fucking gone now. I think it's because of the problematic booster stuff, which I think is hilarious. But what can you do? So there you go. I Jingle all the way. Tubi is definitely not looking through their movie library. <laughs> <laughs> Tubi don't give a fuck, man. Tubi's acting like it's 1984 over there. They don't give a shit. Dude, after Mark... watching all those like Harry Callahan movies, I was like, all these movies are canceled. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, what's next for you on the rags? So the next movie I watched is actually, you know, uh, my mom's Chinese and Cantonese. So uh my friend came over and he has like uh the criterion channel so we logged in and he found they were doing like this jackie chan retrospective and we were like oh let's watch something from let's watch a 1980s jackie chan movie oh, so awesome. we came across the young master which is directed by jackie chan and it is but it's got some awesome fight scenes in it and jackie chan is it's this is young jackie chan when he had huge hair you know, like a uh, hair metal band hair. Yeah, he has like a fro and, almost. Yeah, and the he moves so goddamn fast. The I know there's certain scenes where they speed up the film. Yeah, yeah, whatever. But this movie, it's super fun. It's really exciting. It's got that playful uh, playfulness and youthfulness that Jackie Chan movies just have. And I highly recommend checking it out. The last part. This is not really a spoiler. The last part is this really long fight scene, and you basically get to watch Jackie Chan evolve into a fighter and he kind of goes, he goes berserker mode and it's dope. You have to see this movie. I fucking it's love fucking Jackie. Awesome. I have to watch this. Um, you just reminded me. That was like some of the last stuff I watched on the Criterion channel when I still had a subscription. I watched Police Story oh, really? and Police Story 2. Yes, I watched those both are police stories. Movies. There are several police stories. Now there's like 10 of them because they keep updating the series. and they've Dude, kind new of... police story? It's fucking crazy, I've heard. It's but amazing. The two classic ones, the original Police Story and Police Story 2, are fucking awesome. I got to see both on the big screen at Alamo in Brooklyn uh, oh, before shit. I moved. And I did it as a double feature because it was it was to coincide with the Criterion release of Police Story and Police Story 2. And they were wow. fucking awesome. So I love Jackie. And if you can watch any Jackie Chan anything, I always recommend going to watch Jackie because he's fucking great at what he does. Oh, by the way, if you do watch this, definitely check it out on the Criterion channel because the copy is, it's a flawless copy. Mm. And the colors, and the because it's actual film, as you know, we love. And the colors are beautiful. It's it's a really good looking film. Damn. The colors are amazing. What's this one called? Young Master? 
Yeah, the young the, the young master with Jackie Chan on the Criterion channel. God damn. Awesome. Oh. Uh my final <laughs> wreck. This is it for me. This is my last wreck. Can you feel it? <laughs> I watched a movie I've never seen before. I put it on randomly on Amazon Prime. It's it's going to be gone from Prime in five days, it says. Five or six days. Mark, have you ever watched a movie from the early 2000s called The Time Machine with Guy Pierce, your favorite guy? Yes, I have, okay. and I love that movie. I had never seen it before. I watched it on a whim because I, I like to go through on my streaming services and be like, okay, well, what's leaving? I want to just see, because I find that's the best way to quickly whittle down the selection of movies. I'm like, these fucking movies are leaving. Let's just find something. Yeah. And there it was, leaving in, in at the time, nine or ten days. The Time Machine. I was like, you know, I remember this movie coming out, but I never saw it. Let me watch it. And I was in the mood for like a fun DreamWorks, like 2000 era movie, kind of like Sahara that I talked about on our last episode. I loved The Time Machine. Mark, yes, I was surprised to you. read that a lot of people didn't like this movie. A lot of, you know, snooty critics poo-pooed it and people didn't like it. Well, let me tell you, you people are retarded, <laughs> okay? I'm going to have to bleep that. Is the time machine... I'm going to make a note. <laughs> bleep when I say... I also have to make a note. We have to cut out the part where Pepe the cat is meowing. <laughs> what a banner holiday grab bag this has been. Your face after you said it. Holy shit. Oh so, my god. You people, you know what I just said. I'm not going to repeat it. <laughs> you know. Because the time machine is awesome. And you fuckers lied to us and told us it was bad. Fuck you. People at RogerEbert.com suck dick. Okay? <laughs> Roger Ebert. <laughs> Dude, the time machine is really good. I had such a good time with this movie, particularly because it is just a very, like, it's just great, hard sci-fi. Like, there are great, crazy sci-fi elements in this movie that were very ponderous, things that had, that, and that's some of, to me, some of the best qualities of good sci-fi is when it makes you think about what society would be like, how technology would affect us. You have these big, huge concepts that you're wrestling with and this movie does it on top of it being a great adventure movie with some incredible incredible state-of-the-art cgi at the time sequences like when the time machine there's a great sequence where he when he really uses it to fast forward into the future and you could see the world time lapse around him yeah that's sitting in the dope. bubble it's so By good way, do you know oh god sorry go ahead his I think it's his great grandson actually directed that movie. Yes, yeah, Simon Wells, like the grandson of H.G. Wells. Factoids, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm so happy you love that movie because I'm a big Guy Pierce fan, and as a kid, I loved the the Time Machine. I would read it all the time, <laughs> and uh, I thought the movie was super <gasps> fun. It's one of those like forgotten gems of its time. It's I sort of like couldn't no one, agree no more. Discounted it. Dude, and I said it. I even said it like... out loud when I started watching it. I was like, "Oh, look, it's Mark's favorite guy, Guy Pierce." <laughs> Let me watch this. That's why I picked it. And I was like, "You know, I haven't seen Guy Pierce in a movie in a while. Let's check it out." And I and I remember this being like a big fun adventure movie that came out that I missed. It's awesome. There are some, and you know me. You know me. What I'm gonna harp on. I love physical effects and i love it when it's like dudes in rubber suits and the morlocks in this movie there's some great sequences where the morlocks are chasing the eloy tribes through the woods and they're like these amazing state-of-the-art stan winston effects like guys in stan winston rubber suits and masks that articulate and shit it's fucking awesome it looks so good like not only do you have the great <laughs> time machine set pieces and guy pierce giving a great performance but you've got some insanely fun Physical effects, Stan Winston sequences in this, and it's so awesome. I read, I was reading the Wikipedia after I finished the movie, and apparently Simon Wells suffered from heavy exhaustion during the film and had to be replaced for 20 days in shooting, and Gore Damn. Verbinski took over for him. So oh. some of the sequences that you're seeing are directed by Gore Verbinski, and I would argue that that's a good thing because I, oh, Gore yeah, Verbinski well, is such definitely. a signature visual, visual style or a stylist. Um, he knows he how does to some use great CG stuff. too. 
he does That's, very he's well. He's one of the few directors, like he and Verhoeven are really good at implementing CG in like a really natural way. Yes. But yeah, I'm super happy you love this movie because I loved it. Shit, I thought I was the only one that even saw this movie. Me too. I was surprised that it had such low scores and people were being such dicks online about it. I was like, <laughs> did we watch the same movie? This is a lot of fun. This is a great adventure movie that has an incredible it's an adventure movie disguised as a sci-fi movie. Um, and that's some of my favorite genre stuff right there. And it also oh, yeah. looks I'd... fucking great. It kind of doesn't it have the same feeling as like, I don't know if you liked it, but I love this movie is John Carter of Mars. Yes, I like love John Carter adventure movie that yes. is unfortunately it... forgotten and, a, and bombed. This would make a great like a like a fucking retro sci-fi, like a great retro sci-fi double bill would be John Carter oh, yeah. and the time machine. <laughs> the time machine awesome. was fucking awesome uh if you want to catch the time machine go on amazon prime quickly because it's literally leaving in like days like it'll be gone by the end of the week um so definitely go check it out they've got a great copy of it so the time machine hg wells is the time machine it made me want to go back and watch now the original i've never seen the original either from oh, 1960 really? either yeah Maybe i guarantee I you it's not going to be as cool either. as this one it's going to stink it's no, going to be so it's boring probably... it's going to be like <laughs> guys like morlocks are gonna be all like an albino makeup like walking around they're gonna be all like painted like solid white like in the omega man the vampires they just look really bad like, <laughs> yes Aw. exactly like dawn like, of the dead like the cool gray movie. like the gray zombies the face paint wasn't where it is now <laughs> <laughs> that's like, it for me for rex man so uniform <laughs> what else you got for rex all right i, I apologize i'm dumb in my rex list I have written, as everyone knows on the show, I have a terrible memory. But on my rec list, I put down The Northman. Did I recommend that last yes. week? No, you did not. You and I texted about it offline. Oh, okay, good. So yes. I wasn't an idiot. So Mark, you finally gonna, saw The Northman. I finally got to see The Northman, and it was... That was an incredible... You know how I was raving about, if anyone has... Uh, I was raving about Conan the Barbarian on the love of cinema a while ago. And I was talking about how it's like, Oh, it's this epic journey. And I've been ever since I, I rewatched Conan the Barbarian. I've been looking for another movie that has like this very singular journey of, in this case, a man that's gone through some crazy shit. And this movie, the North man delivers. It was actually, it had, I think it had a lot of callbacks to Conan, the barbarian. Some, there were a lot of parallels. Yeah. Or maybe I'm just saying that cause I'm a huge Conan fan, but this movie is insane. I think we were talking about, there's a spoiler alert. There's this scene where they're like, these guys are getting like, these Vikings are getting all amped up. Oh yeah. And it's, and it's the berserker scene. And I always wondered like, what is that? berserker spirit like and because you only like you know you just there's no you know you just have like a, a written record of it but this one is like this is the visual record of it because it is insanely terrifying the way he moves yes uh, the way he can towards his like body he almost feels like he's like this killing machine it's he the looks way like he fucking moves. zangy from the strength yeah. street fighter video game Dude. when he's like breathing on the character screen Doesn't that's the way it... his body contorts <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> didn't it feel like unreal yes that whole movie feels God, like it's damn. stepped out of it's outside of our reality Oh, yeah. It's like there's something so hyper real and just but it's tactile. Like that's what makes it so crazy is that you feel like you could reach out and touch all the environments. It feels real. The people feel real, but it is not of this earth. Oh, it is yeah. not of this time. It feels like you just got this amazing document from that era. Dude, that <laughs> right? is the perfect way to explain it. Yeah, it, it felt so like ancient. It was yes. great. And, you know, I think uh valhalla rising is a good movie and i and you and i both enjoy it in fact you mentioned it uh yeah. when we were texting but like that's what i wanted valhalla rising to be when i saw it i was like this movie is just like on this other level it's so damn robert good. eggers saw he saw valhalla rising and he was like fuck i guess i should go make the good version now it's yeah. an actual <laughs> viking movie that's the thing you actually want it to be I'll go yeah, the, he does not get stuck in any doldrums in this movie. This movie is <laughs> the pacing is like I didn't realize it was actually it's actually a pretty long movie, but it went through so quickly. 
for yes. me because it and was, the, the pacing is the so the violence good. is so cathartic and visceral and like oh man you, you will be like just fucking on the edge of your couch watching the northman oh well, it's fucking so crazy about it it's so epic like the volcano fight scene oh. naked vo- oh moral yes. man dong naked oh, volcano shit, that's the fight third movie dude i'm sensing a pattern <laughs> this, I'm sensing this a pattern. whole show has a bunch of old dicks in it that's right by the way the northman ends <laughs> with a naked old man fight at a volcano <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> That's how rare exports should have ended. Naked Santa's fighting at a volcano, like fighting each other. <laughs> One guy's got like a giant candy cane. Another guy's got a sack of toys, you know, he's you swinging it around like a fucking mace. <laughs> right? Another another guy has got like this really sharp gingerbread because it's so hard it like cuts. <laughs> I fucking cut you. I cut you. I cut you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the Sims are like talking shit to each other. <laughs> oh my god, this is, sounds like a prison Santa movie. <laughs> Dude, I got the perfect title for it. Prancer. <laughs> That's the prison nickname they give you if you kill somebody right away. Pran- he's a prancer, baby. He's a prancer. <laughs> <laughs> he has sharp gingerbread and he cuts people. He's like... <laughs> I cut you, bitch. He's <laughs> like, oh he's like I'm, a, I'm a shot. Gingerbread shivs. <laughs> I'm a shot caller in here. I cut you, bitch. <laughs> and and all the other Santas are chanting while they're watching the shiv fight go down. They go, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> and they're fighting. Totally naked. <laughs> it's like swinging a gingerbread shit. Oh Jesus! <laughs> I cut you, bitch. <laughs> They're like threatening each other. Shit. In the showers, you know, all the Santas are showering. Oh God. <laughs> Ugh. You dropped the soap. <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing in there? That's what the guards say. What are they doing in there? He's going down the chimney. There are oh. no chimneys here in the prison. That's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> ho, ho, ho. And all the men are <laughs> So stupid. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my god, my eyes are tearing. <laughs> I, oh. My stomach hurts. Oh my god. Oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> I was laughing so hard I didn't even realize that Jess walked in. It's me! <laughs> Dude. Oh my god. Oh, the cat's already been fed because he harassed he was harassing us oh, during the show. Hi. Do you see what I do as the producer in the booth? It's really Cat Wrangler. Cat Wrangler. <laughs> cat Wrangler. That's really what I do. <laughs> Mark, what's next on your rec list? I think that was the last That's one. That's it. The Northman. Holy shit, man. That was fucking it. Holy this was God. a goddamn good holiday grab bag yeah. episode. I feel like we <laughs> should go out on like one more classic yeah, commercial. Ad. Is there any are there any classic commercials, Mark, from your youth? That you remember or like toys that you wanted desperately for Christmas? Oh yeah, Dino Riders, man. That was like the one thing Dino I Riders always toy? wanted. Dude, yeah, let's, that let's shit do was it. the best. Let's it was like it. a combination of dinosaurs and G.I. Joe. How cool. I fucking that? love Dino. I remember the Dino Rider special on VHS. Oh really? And shit. I remember it being awesome. Here we go, Mark. <laughs> Dino Riders. Yeah. Baby. Did you see all those corpses? There you go. Take- Take note, Santa Claus. All Mark wants for Christmas are some dino riders. Yeah, that'd be the shit. That was a damn good commercial to end on, man. Good one, yeah. See the props in that shit? I also love those old toy commercials because they used to use like the physical play sets and they'd build out these like little miniature sets so the kids could play. You could glide the camera through and see all the dead dinosaurs and shit. 
fucking robots and shit just in parts. <laughs> One guy's got his robo guts hanging out. He's like, ah, that shit's mom, awesome. Mom, yeah. mom, I want my mom. I want my mom. That's what the guy's yelling. <laughs> Dino Riders. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the D-Day scene in, in yeah. Saving Private Ryan. Oh my god. That would be, That'd be funny in like the toy commercial to have the kids, you know, the kids are like, pew pew, I'll get you, Quest Star. <laughs> then there's another kid who's doing that bit. He's like, oh mom, mom, I want my mom. And he's, he's like, the guy's his action figure's holding onto its guts. <laughs> Just like a medic dinosaur that's over him, like a pterodactyl. It's like trying to deliver aid. <laughs> <laughs> but he has his arms are too tiny. It's a T Rex. He's like, yeah. oh, hurry, oh, Jack! Him. Penicillin, God, your tiny little claw <laughs> arms aren't helping. He's dying. Fuck pterodactyl. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking give him a shot. <laughs> Dino Riders. <laughs> Damn that voice! How the fuck do you do that voice? That shit's painful. And that's like the one character that guy does. So like, he has no other option. That's, There's nothing else for him to fall back way. on outside of work it's just <laughs> that's the way he sounds they're like barry here oh wait look look bill's coming bill hey bill hey everybody how's it going how was your thanksgiving everybody eat a lot of turkey <laughs> <laughs> bill man you're fucking crazy man <laughs> bill man you're crazy everybody that's it for us happy holidays <laughs> um <sighs> we're gonna try and be back next week just keep an eye out we'll see uh, but we wanted to do this holiday grab bag episode to kick off the holidays right here on the Matt Mark Movie Show. Uh, so happy holidays to you, our listeners. Happy holidays to all the people who reviewed and rated us on Spotify. Thank you. Thank you so much. Holy Thank you. shit. That was crazy. Thank you all. The, by the way, we charted in the country of Peru. And I wanted to say thank you to all our Peruvian oh, wow. fans. Thank you yes. very much. Thank you so much. Holy shit. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time. We're out of here. Peace. Peace.